This reading is from the only complete translation of Brother Lawrence, called Practice of the Presence, a revolutionary translation by Carmen Acevedo Butcher. Reviewers are calling this new translation by acclaimed teacher and translator Dr. Acevedo Butcher, quote, the new standard. Originally written by Nicola Hermont, Nicholas Herman, later Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection, this spiritual classic has diverse global appeal. Listen to Carmen read sections 11 to 13 in the introduction to practice of the presence. These are a failed hermit and a lowly footman, a clumsy oaf, and who broke everything. A failed hermit and a lowly footman. After leaving military service, Hermont tried the life of a religious hermit for a brief period, and as Beaufort explains, he failed at it. It did not suit him, or perhaps he was not ready for it. Beaufort describes his turbulent hermitage experience intimately, saying that his friend, quote, watched joy, sadness, peace, worry, passion, distraction, confidence, and despair, one after another, dominate his soul. Every day he experienced emotional upheavals. Beaufort gently observes that while the hermit's life is excellent for consideration by the advanced and the mature, it is rarely best for beginners. So Hermont became a lowly footman for Monsieur Gaspar of Fubay, 1577-1647 the Baron of Lunac, and Royal Treasurer of Savings in Paris. Working for Fubé introduced him to those of the Second Estate. A nobleman, Fubé held a high government position, collecting the royal domain's revenues and taxation, and controlling the monarchy's revenues and expenditures. For the former soldier, these were difficult days. When three decades later, he looked back at his life as a young footman, he referred to himself as, quote, a clumsy oaf who broke everything. In August 1666, when he was 50-something, he had the first of several conversations at the monastery with Father Joseph of Beaufort. In those, the friar revealed feelings of failure from his 20s. Bofa recorded these conversations carefully, preserving them. We can imagine his quill pen dipping into a pot of brown-black oak gall ink and writing the phrase he'd heard spoken, quote, en gros leur dode qui casse tout. A clumsy oaf who broke everything. A clumsy oaf. As a footman or a laquay, lackey, Hermann believed himself en gros lourdeaud, a clumsy oaf. That implies fiasco. For someone who understood his low status within his role and the expectations put on him, something we recognize in status and structures today. The friar's gros lourdeaud Clumsy oaf is often glossed over as a soundbite for his humility. And his self-effacing phrase has lost much of its significance. Yet it's important and worthwhile to reclaim its meaning. His words remind us of the cruel inequities of the catastrophic 17th century. While the aesthetic of height and poise accorded with the upper echelons of Louis XIV's court, gros reflected the low rung of its hierarchy. Gro or gross in English is often slang for repulsive. In France in the mid 1600s, gro translates as quote, clumsy and has a wide range of related negative connotations. Quote, big, large, thick, fat, heavy, sad, weighty, rustic, lumpish, ignorant, untaught, low-born, surly, inelegant, unpolished, awkward, clownish. 
These connotations surface in an August 5, 1700 letter written by the Archbishop of Cambrai, François Fenelon, 1651 to 1715, to Marie Grion du Valgran, Countess of Montbaron. When depicting the friar, the Archbishop chooses Grossier, a variant of Brother Lawrence's own word, to mean, quote, uneducated, sophisticated, unsophisticated, coarse, rough. Quote, Brother Lawrence was uneducated and rough, grossier, by nature, yet wise and sensitive by grace. This mixture was lovable and showed us God in him. Fenelon's intended praise and Brother Lawrence's self-selected grow for clumsy, large, untaught, low-born seem found fossilized indictments of 17th century inequities. In choosing Lourdod, oaf, Brother Lawrence also brings in an insulting way of saying, quote, not noble-born. Cotgrave's 1611 French-English Dictionary has a long list of unflattering nouns for Lourdod, including, quote, sod, dunce, grotesque, or lout. With possible roots and words for bruising, lurid, and hunchback, lordos, lourdod largely sums up the unjust lives of the third estate. They starved, literally grew less tall as a result, and had heavy, bruising, back-breaking burdens placed on them, and those in other estates referred to them in mainly derogatory terms. This was the friar's lot at twenty. His chosen epithet of, quote, a clumsy oaf also brings an understanding of the estate system where he has just the right amount of irreverent spirit, a spirit that a Nicolas Hermont needed to persist and actualize a self since he started down at the lowest level of society. Who broke everything? The rest of the friar's self-description reveals more about his early life. In conversation with Beaufort, he recalls that as a young footman, he was a clumsy oaf who broke everything. Qui casse tout. His casse intimates a breaking of more than actual dishes. Quote, I shake repeatedly, I shatter, or I agitate, is its Latin root quasso. Casse, in many ways, applies to how Hermont felt at 20 about his career, physical and emotional health, and life. Quote, broken, crushed in pieces, quashed, discharged, turned out of service, annulled, canceled. Qui casse tout, who broke everything, suggests a profound anxiety that characterizes his 20s. At this low point in Hermon's life, an uncle became his mentor. Anonymized in last words, he was Hermon's uncle Jean, his mother's brother, also a native of Eremenil. Some years earlier, we also know his uncle had become a discalced Carmelite lay brother. Even with his uncle's support, young Hermon seemed stuck, quote, day after day passed and he became more and more uncertain about what to do with his life, as Beaufort discloses. Only after an indefinite period of intense reflection, quote, hard struggles innerly, tears and sighs and self-doubt, did Armand decide at 26 in mid-June 1640 that he would enter the order of the discalced Carmelites on the Rue Vaugirard in Paris as a lay brother himself. Thank you for listening in. Peace to you all.